Welcome to Mansa Talk Podcast. Uh, we cover African excellence. I am honored today to be joined by Osita Oparaugu. I hope I have said that well. I have given it yes, my best. Have. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, he is the CEO of Ogele, and we are excited to talk to him, not just about his company, but also his place within the wider African narrative around being able to tell our own stories on our own platforms, uh, build our own tech enterprises, and again, control our own narrative. Osita, take it away and tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so um, thank you very much, and thank you, um, viewers, uh, audience. Um, my name is Osita Opara Ugo, and I am the founder of Ogele. I am a lawyer and a filmmaker. I read law at the University of Buckingham, United Kingdom, and then, of course, uh, filmmaking, cinematography from the New York Film Academy. And Ogele is a user-generated video sharing app for African content only. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, you shifted from law into creative industries. I'm sure it's a bit of a shift in thought processes. Uh, why telling stories? Why becoming a filmmaker? So first, um, making films and creating videos is my passion. And um, I became a lawyer for my dad and a filmmaker <laughs> And a filmmaker for myself. <laughs> so you you know how it is with African parents. Um, yeah. African parents want you to be uh, a lawyer or yeah. a doctor or a doctor or an engineer. <laughs> and uh, I think I think that's the reason why, to be very honest, Africa is underdeveloped. We will come to that <laughs> as this conversation. We will come to that as this conversation goes on, and yeah. I will give you uh, compelling reasons why um, Africa, part of uh, you know, parents insisting on their children being what yeah. they want them to be, not yeah. what the kids want to be, how it yeah. has underdeveloped Africa. We will come yeah. to that. But for me, shifting from law to filmmaking, first filmmaking is my passion and secondly i realized that video is a very strong tool in storytelling yeah uh, and for me i think that having africans control their videos control what is filmed and talked about Africa is a yeah. way of changing the negative narratives. I have no regret living law. I, I had a fair share of that. Um, but to be honest, this is where making videos, telling stories through videos is really where my passion uh, lives. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. Um, I definitely connect with that. Um, I am also a storyteller. Uh, I was able to slightly bulldoze my parents and I was able to study film in university. They were not happy at all. <laughs> they were not happy at all. Um, it eventually evolved into a career in marketing and brand development and business development and so on. I use a lot of storytelling in that world. Uh, but yeah, I, I fully understand <laughs> the pressure the desire of our parents to stick to more traditional occupations and career opportunities. Um, and I, I, I think if you'd allow us, it will be so interesting to jump into it right now, where okay. figuring out how that holds back, especially when it comes to innovation and the relentless march towards new occupations, new categories, new opportunities, um, if they support that, for example, at a younger age, um, you might have been um, maybe at a much higher level in terms of the career you finally chose versus the few years that went to law or the few years that went to other uh, skills and so on. So it's usually such an interesting balance between the old versus the new, the march of the world forward 
and the desire to ensure perfection in your children, the engineer, lawyer, doctor, and so on. Um, in, a, in hindsight for you, would you still have studied law or would you have preferred to just go directly into storytelling? To, to be very honest, I think that I would have gone straight to storytelling. Um, but you see, um, the law background that I have has also helped shape me and the organization that I run. Yeah. So the, the, the law background that I have has also given a lot of contact with which I have used to advance my present occupation being, of course, a tech founder and the yeah. founder of Ogele. So yeah. it's very difficult now to say, uh, would that have progressed? Or yeah. will this have supported this? But in all, in all, I think that if I had started off where my passion, okay, was at, at, at a younger age, I think by now I would have created a well bigger uh, platform than we have it as at today. Nevertheless, you can also uh, talk down on walking into a conversation, trying to start a business relationship, a collaboration, and coming from a law background. It, it gives you a lot of swag, a lot of respect, a lot of edge in yeah. discussions, especially with the, um, the ownership structure of content. Yeah. As m people begin to realize that owning a content now is like owning a house. Yeah. As people begin to realize how to monetize their content, people yeah. begin now to realize how agreements have to be written and maintained in the yeah. area of content creation and content dissemination. So yeah. that also helps in, in each uh, way uh, in what we do. Right. But in general, I think that um, Africans should embrace more, at this stage, more of science and technology if we have to move the continent forward. Yeah. But when I, when I mean science and technology, science in all ramification and technology in all its ramifications. So without yeah. technology, you and I wouldn't be talking, even though we yeah. are not talking STEM. You yeah. are in Kenya, yeah. we are audience are all over the world, I'm sitting yeah. in Nigeria, you know, yeah. so this is what technology has brought also. So we should be able, as we fight as a people and as a continent, yeah. to create our own narratives. Yeah. We should be able also to be part of making the equipment that will help yeah. us to disseminate yeah. those content we have created that define who we are. Yeah, completely agree. And I, th I think... A technology also has such a strong place within the entertainment industry where we need to be able to build our own platforms, our own technologies to dis disseminate creative work. We need to build our own cameras, our own sound systems, our own innovations really in the space that at the end of the day create a very strong ecosystem around not just creativity, but around um, technology around minerals, around businesses, around uh, employment, around um, execution of the agricultural industry, and so on. And what I like about what you've said is that we need to have ownership across the full ecosystem. We need to be able to monetize and own every single part, from the production, to the dissemination, to the education, and to the management of our own content and stories. And I will very strongly uh, extend that throughout all other areas of the economy. We need to be able to, absolutely. yeah, we need to be able to drill our own oil, refine our own oil, sell our own oil in Africa. We need to be able to do the same with gold, minerals. We need to be able to do the same with timber. And I think majority of the African thought process around these issues is that we do not have the capacity. But if you go back to our history, 
For example, I was very pleasantly surprised to learn that Nigeria already has about 10 to 15 different refineries. That is something that someone outside Nigeria might not be aware of. We can speak about the state of their refineries, but the infrastructure is there. The know-how is there. So all we need is to be able to, I would say, accept the responsibility that it is on us to execute. We cannot put it on someone else to do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves. And what that creates is the opportunity to, again, own the result of that work, own the fruits of that labor. Correct. So you see, um, I am a believer in the continent, right? So yeah. when I was when I was working as the founder of my other company, Footprint to Africa, then as a lawyer, it's an investment company. Uh, I did tour around Africa. I know Africa. Yeah. I have been to nearly thirty countries in Africa. Yeah. And been to about thirty countries, if not more, in Africa. I just didn't go as a tourist. Yeah. I went as a founder of a company that has impacted in that country in one way or the other. So I had interactions with the people. Yeah. In 2017, I came to the logical conclusion that we have underrepresented ourselves. Yes. We have undersold ourselves as Africans. Yes. We have not harnessed enough of the God-given potentials as Africans. Yes. And I realized that the only way to do this is to create a user-generated video sharing app yeah. that will give every African, no matter where he is, the opportunity to create his video in his language and share it among the people who hear his or her language. Yeah, I, I was really penned to note in 2015 that out of the first 20 user-generated video sharing app in the world, none is African-owned, none is African-controlled, none is African-focused. Yeah. And even to today as we speak, I am not sure that apart from Ogele, that there is another user-generated video sharing app in yeah. Africa that is owned by an African and it is focused on only African content. Yeah. We have created Ogele and we want Africans to understand that what we have created is not because of money. Yeah. Yes, every business is, all a, will, uh, is designed to make money, yeah. but what we have created that what we have created is a platform that will help Africa to change the narrative. A yes. platform that will help us, no matter the language you speak. Are you in Tanzania, you speak Swahili? Are you yeah. in Rwanda, you speak Kenya, Rwanda? Are you in Nigeria, you speak Hebo, Yoruba, or Hausa? Are you in South Africa and you talk Zulu? It doesn't matter the language you speak. You are not alone. You, 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 you don't exist alone in that community, that state, or that country. Yeah. Create that video. Create a channel on Ogele. Share that video. Tell us what makes you unique. We want to hear about that thousand cultures, that thousand tribes, that thousand languages, that thousand beauty, the beauty of Africa. Let's tell it ourselves. Yeah. You see... Chino Achebe said, unless the lion learns how to tell its story, the story will always glorify the hunter. Yeah. The story that has been told about Africa has glorified only the West who told the story. Yeah. I am from Nigeria. And when I was in the primary school, I was told that Mongo Park discovered the River Niger. River Niger is in Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria was existing before Mongo Park came to Nigeria. Yeah. The river was there. Mongo Park didn't come with the river. Yeah. How is it that the River Niger is that is already existing before Mongo Park came? Waited for Mongo Park to discover it. Yeah. 
the fact is that Mongo Park documented the River Niger. Yeah. Because our forefathers who lived around the area did not document the river that helps them live every day. Yeah. If you go to Rwanda, Kigali, you will not understand that you are in Africa. You will begin to say, oh, wow. Africans who want to go to Paris and say it's the most beautiful place in the world. Who said Paris is finer than Kigali? Content. Yeah. The video that came out of Paris is finer than the video that the West has taken out of Kigali because yeah. when they show Kigali, they take the worst of the Kigali. In yeah. fact, if you watch CNN or BBC and see a, a video of Africa or maybe Nigeria, you will never come to Lagos. <laughs> So I, I am of the school of thought, right, that more and more Africans should embrace storytelling through video and let the world see who we are and understand us for who we are and like us for who we are. Let's tell our story ourselves. Yeah. And what I love the most about what you said is Unfortunately, the only interesting stories about Africa are the negative ones. However, exactly. if you, and if you also extend it to the West and to certain media outlets there, even in covering their own stories, they generally tend to be fairly negative. Like anytime mm. you see news of US cities, it, you usually find, oh, there was a, like the other day in New York, there was a shooting. Um, there was a riot in which state, there was protests in which state, etc. But I think in Africa, we have the perfect opportunity because all our industries are so young and new of telling these stories more and more in a positive light. Kigali right. is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been in. Like, it is amazing how beautiful that city is. And everyone who's watching this, go to Kigali. Spend about a week there. You will not believe how beautiful, how clean, how polite the people are, how amazing a country it is. Same thing with Lagos. Lagos is the most vibrant, hot, fast-paced city I've ever been in. You go to Lagos and you want to be rich, you want to be Dangote, you want to work hard, just because of the energy of the people, of how exciting it is. And it's our responsibility, I'd say, this generation of Africans who are working, creating wealth, are building enterprises and so on, to be able to shift that narrative and tell these stories in a better way for the young people coming up. People who've spent hours on TikTok, hours on Instagram, are unlikely to even interact with 1% African content. It is so difficult and so rare. So it is our responsibility to be able to tell those stories. And I think this brings me to my next question of curiosity with Ogele. Um, you've been able to curate a very strong platform of just African content. What's exciting and challenging about doing that? What are some of the stories you have about bringing African content onto one platform? So, um, we, it's been a journey. Um, first, it was difficult to, to get the content creators to begin to share their content on our platform, Ogele, um, because the people want to monetize their content, right? Yeah. And they want to put it on a content where, on a platform, sorry, where they have enough eyeballs. Yeah. So for the first one or two years, we focus on getting people to get to believe in what we have built and yeah. get to also understand that the traffic will come, the audience will come. Yeah. You know, most people who go to platforms like Facebook or YouTube will not believe that the very first video that hit one million views on YouTube was a video of a Coca-Cola advert created by the Brazilian footballer Ronaldinho. Yeah. It was already created as a platform where people share pets. Yeah. And then evolved, right? Yeah. Now... Ours is, we don't want to talk about the world. 
Ogele, we are not concerned about the world. We are concerned about Africans who live in Africa and Africans who live in the diaspora. Yeah. We are concerned about the content they consume. We want it to be the content created by Africans in Africa and Africans in the diaspora. Yeah. We want lovers of African content globally to content to 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 see and then understand who we are based on the content that we created ourselves that tell our narratives. Yeah. Uh, and over the years, our people are beginning to understand our direction. Yeah. We thank God today that we have nearly 78,000 videos on this platform. We've had millions of users now in excess of 7.5 to 8 million users. And we have a content creator ecosystem of about 244,000 registered content creators who now create content, share on our platform, and monetize it on our platform. Yeah. We are not, we are not there yet. Um, people say to me, oh, Sita, oh, wow, what a, con what a platform you're building. I say, we are not there yet. We, we are not there in any way. We are not close to what we should be doing, okay? But yeah. we are happy that Africans, all over Africa, and Africans in the diaspora are beginning to understand that we are creating a platform where their content will be seen, yeah. where their creativity will be seen and noticed, a content, a platform that will give them visibility. Yeah. We don't want Africans to create their content and being treated as a third class or a fourth class content creator when you are supposed to be at par with every other content creator globally. Yes. It, it's not been a, a, an easy uh, task. And of course, you know, in a platform like this, the promotion is not easy. But every day, Africans are uh, coming on our platform. They are promoting that platform. They are buying into what we are talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's amazing. That's very exciting. And it's a difficult business. I would anticipate to run. And kudos to you for being able to get it up to this point. And I am so excited to see what you're going to continue to do with it in the future. Um, what excites you about the current interest in African stories? We see uh, you are partner stroke competitor Netflix coming onto the continent and throwing money around. We see YouTube doing something similar. We see Amazon Studios in Nigeria. We see CNN and BBC doing their own content. What's exciting for you in terms of that? And what opportunities are you trying to take advantage of? for Africans and for African creators, because we are seeing all this interest from, especially the West, coming to Africa. There's even interest from China coming to Africa. But now you are one of the few taking this African interest to those areas, to the West, to Asia. What's exciting about that and what do you hope to achieve going forward? So you see, um, the competition is tough. In the industry, it's very tough. It's very difficult when you run a, a startup and your competitor is YouTube. Um, it's quite tough, right? But we know for a fact that with time, with time, all right, the, the, the war will fight itself. Yeah. Because, because you will not believe that five, five years ago, if we had this podcast five years ago, 10 years ago, and I told you that a Nigerian singer will win the Grammys. Would you believe? No. If, if I tell you 10 years ago that a Kenyan artist, a song from Kenya or Tanzania, Platinum Diamond, will, will be played in a nightclub in, in California. Will you believe? No. Listen. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a very strong cultural shift that will happen in the next few years. You, you just watch, you will see it. Yeah. When, that, when, it, when it happens, right, 
every African in Africa and in the diaspora will understand the need for us to build our own. Yeah. Africa is the only continent that is not building their own. Yeah. That is my that is my message. That is why I am around Africa every day. I, I'm in Tanzania, I'm in Kenya, I'm in Rwanda, I'm in South Africa, I'm in Mozambique, I'm in Lagos, I'm in Ghana. I'm telling to content creators, come, 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 let's build our own. Our inability, the inability of our parents, our forefathers to have built a unified Africa is the reason why we are where we are today. Yeah. Let's support our own. If you want to find an African content, find it on an African platform. Yeah. In China, they have thousands of their YouTube. They don't use the YouTube. Why? Yeah. In India, they have thousands of Ogele. Why? In yeah. Russia, they have their network. Why? People yeah. understand that ma video making and storytelling is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool to tell a story of those people. Yeah. But I'm happy. I'm happy that last two weeks, a content creator, a female content creator from Ethiopia reached out to us. And she said, I saw Ogele ad. I went to the platform and I saw that it's all about Africa. I think that even though I make my content in California, the life and the life of my content and the home of my content should be on Ogele where Africans go to because the people who consume my content are 80% Africans. Yeah. Let me let me tell you you create a video in Nigeria and you put it on Netflix. And you say it's a film, an African film that you have created in Nigeria and you put it on Netflix. Yeah. 98.8% of the people who consume that content are Africans. Yeah. A typical American will not go to Netflix and click on a Nigerian film. Yeah. In the first place, he will not understand the Nigerian English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. And then and then you create a film out of South Africa and you put it on Netflix. Somebody from Russia will not understand it. Yeah. They may like the picture. They may like the picture, <laughs> but they won't understand it. Yeah. Now you have a comedian in you have a comedian in Kenya. Um, what's his name again? He said he's the president of comedy. Um, Eric he's worked Eric Omondi, he has worked with us on Ogele. He he was one of our ambassadors two years ago. The stories that Eric tell that make people laugh in Kenya and make people laugh in Nigeria. If you say it in New York, you end up in the police station. Yes. The African comedians, the things they talk here, if yeah. you say it in America, you continue to receive slap every week. <laughs> so yeah. the, things that, the things that make us laugh don't make the people in the West laugh. Yeah. Our cultures are different. Yeah. Our food is different. We are yeah. different people. We do respect. I am being very frank, honest as it is. Africans, we still don't respect our own. Yeah. We, we are not bothered. We know a few of us believe in the continent. Those who believe in the continent believe in what we have built. Yeah. We will keep steady, focus, keep our eyes on the ball, and we keep making compelling content that talk and represent the true Africa that we believe in. And we yeah. know for a fact that in the next coming of years, more and more Africans will buy into the Ogele culture. We believe why we have created Ogele, and we know that our dream, our mission, is to make Ogele the mirror with which the world see the true Africa. Nothing yeah. more. Yeah. This is our goal, to make Ogele the mirror with which the world see the true Africa. Yeah. Make Ogele that platform where African 
content creators will put their content, get the right visibility, and monetize those content at yeah. a par with how the creators from the West monetize their content on the Western platforms. Not yeah. a platform where a content creator in America will be paid $1 per view and the content creator in Lagos will be paid $0.10 cents per view. Yeah. We want to build an equal platform where every African content creator will be treated equally and given the right visibility for the world to see their work. Yeah. This is our mission. This is our direction. Amazing. And I, I think I like how you've broken down the monetization of um, content around the world, because that's really how it works. Um, an African creator generally gets paid 10% of what a European or North American connect, uh, creator gets. So it brings me to the more and more conclusion that really the solution is us building our own quote-unquote Chinese walls where we own everything. Um, what other industries or what other categories, even in entertainment, do you think Ogele should expand to or someone else should think about getting into those spaces? Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Is it uh, Amazon? Is it our own digital platforms? What do you think should be the next step for Ogele or for other platforms? So for Ogele, we have already a next step, which I will share with you. And that is the direction which we think, and I think as a founder, Africa should be looking into. Okay. So look at, first, we we'll look at the knowledge. I am an advocate, and I have said this to the African Union. I have written an official letter to Southern African Development Council, SADC. I have written an official letter to ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African State. Yeah. Africa should embrace, first, Africa should embrace STEM. Yeah. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah. Africa should embrace this in all our post-primary education system. Yeah. If Africa embraces STEM, STEM subjects, right? Yeah. Science, yeah. technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? Yeah. What, what, what benefit will it be to the continent? It will mm -hmm. help us to catch the young people and for them to have a shift in their thinking about the future. Yeah. The future of Africa, for us to build an Africa beyond aid, we must have a shift in our education system and embrace the technology, science and technology. Yeah. If we do this, we will automatically create thousands of Ogele, thousands of YouTube, thousands of TikTok, thousands of Instagram. We will create our own payment gateways. Yeah. We will create thousands of M-Pesa. Yeah. We will create thousands of flutter wave. Yeah. We will create in the broadcasting industry, we'll create thousands of it. In entertainment, in finance, thousands. In agricultural development, thousands. So we first of all have to have a rethink of our education system because yeah. this is the knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, you don't have anything. Let me tell you, the world is talking about 5G. What do you think 5G is? Are we not talking with 2G? Kenya is talking on 2G. America is even talking on 2G, 3G, 4G, 4G light. And all of a sudden, they came with a 5G. What do you think 5G is? 5G is to enhance seamless streaming. Streaming of what? Content. Content created by who? The West or Africans? If it's going to be streaming, who will control the streaming equipment? Do you think streaming is going to all be all entertainment streaming? People stream meetings. People stream educational content. People yeah. stream political content. People stream agricultural content, development content. What Africa needs today is for Africa to rethink post-primary education system and embrace science and technology. If we embrace science and technology, we will equip our youth. When our, equip, our youth are equipped, 
they will venture into every aspect of life that has to do with science and technology, and its multiplier effect will be the develop economic development, human capital development, that will yeah. eventually develop the economy of the continent. Yeah. So for Ogele, we are venturing into e-learning. Ogele e-learning. And Ogele e-learning is focused on STEM. We have already created 1,008 hours of educational content. Oh, wow. Based, Amazing. Based 1,008 hours of educational content based on STEM. And this, our focus is the post-primary education system. Yeah. Year, year one to year six. The six years of post-primary education system. This product will go live 1st of May. So from the 1st of May, no matter where you are in Africa, you will have access to Gele e-learning at a fee, but it's a very highly subsidized fee that will support Africa to catch our youth young. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And it's, I, I know this is the plan eventually to be able to push it to younger ages, younger Africans to be able to get into STEM. Um, it is also so important to educate the people who are currently looking for jobs, who are currently looking for opportunity, who are trying to build a career, who need to shift from humanities heavy to STEM heavy, who need to work in technology, who need to work in science, in chemistry, and so on. Um, so I, I would again hazard a guess that you're moving slowly from the 20-year-olds roughly, going into the teens and into younger ages. How soon do you think we'd be able to have an African STEM course for children as young as five, as young as three? Eventually, it will come to that. But our next development, because mm -hmm. we see that the continent started late mm -hmm. in embracing science and technology, we already have a very wide audience between uh, 20, We already have a very strong number between 20 and 35. Yeah. The 20 and 35, most of them have left school. Yeah. Most of them stopped at the first lower secondary school. Yeah. So some, most didn't complete the secondary curriculum. Yeah. Some didn't get to get to the university. Yeah. Now there are this number of youth who now roam the streets, who don't have the right skill sets who now think that if they get to Germany, if they get to Europe, that there's money on the street for them to pick. <laughs> so we are, we are going to create our second development after we go live with our STEM courses will yeah. be to create vocational content that will give these people some level of skill sets to be able to get into the workspace, the workforce. Yeah. Once that is done, as our third stage of development, we will now come back to look at how we will catch them as early as five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting that you have this evolution from entertainment into learning. What other categories are you excited to get into as Ogele? So as Ogele, for now, our, our, our business plan is to <coughs> first develop the learning, capture the learning, first develop this platform to the point where it becomes a skill center for Africans. Yeah. So you come and learn, uh, you know, on either the vocational, either the STEM, and they will also help you to create the right content if it ends up there, so you can now monetize on the investment on the entertainment side of things. We are yeah. sticking with this. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so key. That's so important. Um, you are mostly a video sharing platform. Um, we've seen other video sharing platforms either move from being social media heavy into video sharing or being video sharing and adding community elements, membership elements, etc. Is this part of the plan with Ogele? Will we see a community section where people can converse and connect? 
Definitely. Uh, you can bring uh, people together if you don't give them that opportunity to canvas, to connect and develop more. You know, uh, that ecosystem, that development is very key. Um, so we have, like I said before, a couple of thousands of uh, content creators, an ecosystem of a very young agile content creator base. If that number hits a million, we will convert um, a segment of what Ogele is offering into a community where people can converse amongst themselves and discuss and plan. Collaboration is key in this industry. If you have, if you have one camera and I have light, and we have a storytelling guy amongst us, a screenwriter, and we have another guy who has a good home, we can turn the home into a studio. I bring my camera, you bring your right, the screenwriter will write, five of us will create a content and own the property of that content and then put it on Ogele to monetize it. Yeah. Uh, how will you know that I have a good home that we can use as a studio? And how will I know that you have the right equipment, the cameras and the lightings that we can use? And how will I know that Mr. Michael uh, he has very good talent in writing scripts if we don't have a common place where we all talk and connect. Yeah. So we believe that creating a community for such conversation to happen will enable people from pockets, units of groups that will create content and monetize those content and share, of course, in what comes out of the content that they own jointly. Amazing, amazing. And I think it speaks to the need, again, of Africans coming together and helping each other to build out our own individual businesses and careers, but together, where you have Correct. your own studio, you have your own equipment, you have your own talent, and you're able to come together and work together, not just help each other out, actually work together, create revenue, split it, and so on. So I think that brings me to maybe one of the final questions um okay. which stories for you as a filmmaker which stories would you like to tell not so much as ogele the platform as osita the storyteller so for me as a filmmaker the story that i love most to tell will be the diversity that i find in africa and how unique and interconnected these diversities are. I would like to tell an African story that is compelling about how beautiful this continent is and how accommodating and lovely the people of the continent are. I, I, I like to tell stories of how uh, we are a touch and feel people. You, 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 if it's not told, people will not understand how Africans connect. I tell you, I tell you a story. Uh, a certain man that I know um, is a retired teacher and friend of his, who is also a retired teacher, had stroke. And he couldn't go for their monthly um, uh, pension. So this other teacher goes to collect the monthly pension for himself and his friend. Unfortunately, a certain government that was in place in that region stopped paying teachers' pension. This other teacher goes out of his way to get money from his children and takes a bit of it to his friend who has stroke and give him that he's collected the pension when he didn't collect the pension. So when he died, when the man that had the stroke died, the one who collects the pension now made the story available to people. That indeed, they ask him, they ask him, why do you do this? Why do you do this? He said, he's already sick. If I come and tell him that the only way of raising money for him 
has been blocked. He will die. I cannot afford to give him that kind of bad news. Yeah. This same teacher, I was told, now has 20 or 30 of his friends that he goes to collect their pensions. You now begin to ask yourself, at 75 to 80 years, how did they all connect in a way? This is some kind of story that I love to tell. This is how Africans we are connected. We are a family. Our yeah. people know themselves. We don't live in a community where there is no love, no empathy. So I like to tell story that talk about the African culture and how beautiful and unified it is. Yeah, understood. Wow. Amazing. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to watch that. Um, can, can I add more pressure and ask when we can see it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> they are putting the script together now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, and I think what I like the most is that it talks about two parts that we never really see in African story, storytelling. Um, fairly mature characters older characters in their 70s, 80s, and so on. Almost all stories, it's a prince and a young maiden trying to get married and so on. So I like that you've gone for that audience. And I like that you're talking about, especially the ability of Africans to care for each other. Too many stories are oh so and so cast so and so, so and so stole from so and so, so and so did one, two, three bad things and so on. So I really like that it has a positive spin, a positive story behind it. Thank you. Final, final question on that. What's the genre? Is it going to be comedy? Is it going to be thriller? Is it going to be action? What's the genre? It, it will be it will be more of comedy. Mm -hmm. it, it will it will it will come more of more of comedy. Okay, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Um, then I think Ogele will share that story on their platform. So everyone, Correct. please register. Go to ogele.com. Um, is there any message you would like to give the general public about Ogele? Um, any yes. story, any narrative? Please share. Yeah, so for me and for the viewers, um, I want you all to know that Ogele is Africa. First, Ogele means gong. In South Africa, it's called uh, Vuvuzela. In Swahili, it's called Gengele. It's just a means, it's an instrument that is used to disseminate information. We are saying that Ogele is African. Ogele is where you find African content only, be it in music, in film, in comedy, cuisine, lifestyle, in whatever entertainment video you are looking for. Gele is also a very strong resource center for yeah. learning. Yeah. So you can learn how to make Nigerian dishes on Ogele. You can learn how to make Ethiopian, Kenyan, South African dishes on Ogele. Yeah. We are saying to you, embrace what we have built. It is built for to change the negative of Africa. It is yeah. built so that we can connect ourselves as Africans. It is built so that we can create our own content, share it among ourselves, no matter the language that we create, no matter yeah. the language that we speak. So yeah. Ogele is yours. Ogele is African. We want to see you on Ogele. We want you to create your content, share it on Ogele, monetize it on Ogele, and let's tell the world who we truly are through the videos that we make and as yeah. we share them on Ogele. Thank you yeah. very much. Fantastic. Fantastic conclusion. That's amazing. And I think it's, again, so important for us as Africans to not only support African projects, African businesses, but to actively take part in, actively create content, actively tell your own stories. No one else will tell it if it's not us. We right. have to tell the story. We can't just wait for the hunter to tell it. We can't just be Correct. the lion waiting for someone else. Correct. This has been amazing. Thank you so Thank much, Asita. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you, please.
Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your wisdom. Everyone, please go to ogele.com. Please subscribe. Please watch some content. Share it with a friend. Download, download our app. Ogele is O-G-E-L-L-E. Download our app. Share with friends and family. And then we see you on that good African side. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Have a lovely morning, afternoon. And see you all next time. Thank you. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.